introduce Dr. Eric Haas. He's a uh, former Cal grad from the uh, mechanical engineering department in Professor Albert Pisano's lab, my lab. Uh, after graduating in 2004, he went to Form Factor, which is a semiconductor wafer pro card company, and since started innovating there a whole bunch with upwards of 30 patents and a bunch of mechanical engineering designs and new product architectures. So I'm looking forward to his talk today on the on patents. Eric. Thanks. Okay. Oh, and by the way, the yield improved, 
right? Without improving their process, the yield improved magically. Why? Contact resistance was a big problem. So what we do is we make these little we make little springs that look like this, and, and, and we put them on. <coughs> and say around 2000, 2002, this is the state of the art. The state of the art was what we call a pH 150. And you can see on this that every one of these little squares is a device that's being tested in parallel. And there's a, there's a lot of mechanical engineering and electrical engineering to go and make sure that these probe tips land on these bond pads on these little tiny chips. And then, so when I joined in 2004, you know, increasing the parallelism was the name of the game. So we wanted to touch a wafer one time. We want to touch a wafer one time and test the entire wafer. So uh, this is the very first multi-tile probe guard that, uh, that hit the market. This is, uh, I joined in August 2004. I delivered this product to Intel in February 2005. So, uh, six months of wild craziness. Uh, I filed a lot of patents on it, and, uh, and this has became the Harmony product line. Uh, a year later, it was announced to, uh, to the world that this product was available for us, and we would be touching down on a silicon wafer one time and testing all devices in parallel. So that one touchdown happened another couple years later, and in 2009, this year, was the first year we tested an entire DRAM wafer, 700, approximately 760 chips. All at, all at the same time, which is a, was an interesting uh, engineering challenge. So during that time, I filed a lot of patents with, uh, with the USPTO. I filed uh, approximately 34 patents with the USPTO, five are issued, and, and the other 28 are still in the patent prosecution process. It, it takes approximately three years to go through this process. Oh, and by the way, it costs a little bit of money. Um, so, so I have these patents, and what I'm going to give to you today I'm going to give you two things. So first, I'm going to give you the process and the methods which I use to come up with these new, new ideas. And I'm going to give you a guarantee, which is a wild thing in an engineering environment to give you. I'm going to guarantee that if you follow this process, right, not only will you be a more effective engineer and impact in society, but, but that you will likely have a, a, a lot of patents under your name. Right? So I'm going to guarantee that. And, and I don't know, it's not very measurable guarantee. So maybe it's, it's not worth a whole lot to you. But I think that there, my message to you is, is that there are ways to pay attention to, to pay attention to your customers and to meet their needs. And I don't care if you're manufacturing ham sandwiches, right, or if you're working at a technology company. Right? The, the, if you do pay attention to your customer, you, you, will, you will improve, improve, uh, improve their, their, their state, and uh, you will add value to their product, and, and, and you will uh, reap some other benefits of impacting society. So in this talk, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to start out, and we're going to go through some basics. After we get through the basics of what the patents are, I can kind of set the stage for you know, what, this, what, what this means to have a patent, or what it means to generate a patent, or generate a disclosure. Right? And, and then, uh, I already gave you the guarantee. You can, you can take that, take it to the bank, as long as you can find me and make me uh, <laughs> accountable for my guarantee of the future, uh, then, uh, then you'll be satisfied, I'm sure. This is a question I get a lot. Why, why should I patent? Who should patent? Why should we patent? You know, these things are expensive. What are we doing? And I know I'm, uh, I'm facing a tough crowd here, uh, especially in Berkeley, uh, to say that the answer is actually it's a, it's a financial financial objective. They usually people file patents based on financial objectives. So corporations, organizations, you know, they, they, they work very hard to come up with these new ideas, right, and they want to recoup their costs. This is my hypothesis, right? This is not the answer, right? It's not written in stone somewhere, but this is this is my hypothesis. So I say it's financial. And I'll, I'll try to argue why, why that is. Right? So in, in this society we live in, we have a government, uh, I'm sure you're aware. And <laughs> And you know our founding fathers, uh, when they drafted the Constitution, uh, the United States Constitution, they gave Congress certain powers. And one of those powers that they provided to Congress was a power was it's, it's listed in Article One, Section Eight, and it says this. It says, it says the Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing by securing for limited times authors and inventors an exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. And I know you can't read this. That's why I read it for you. <laughs> but, but there's some really important things that it says here, right? Because 
I, I don't know that that actually we're living up today to what we're 